You know, GM is hoping that its 2009 bankruptcy deal might give it immunity against any legal claims connected to its ignition switch recall, but our next guest says there's no chance of that. Commercial litigation attorney Nolan Klein is joining us right now. Nolan, you say that GM is liable and that they should be held responsible here. Is the law on your side? Well, when you talk about GM being liable, we have two different components of that. We have whether or not they're liable for injuries that arise directly out of this ignition switch recall or defect, which plainly, if it can be proved that they were responsible for it, they would be. And then we have, are they liable in light of the bankruptcy? And how does the bankruptcy court and the 2009 bankruptcy play into this? And I think the key component here, when we analyze how the bankruptcy is going to play into GM's liability, is the evidence that suggests that they may have known about this problem back to 04 and covered it up. Now, I don't know if that's been shown conclusively yet, but if it can be shown conclusively, people who before 2009, the old GM's customers, who were deprived of the opportunity to even investigate or to be aware of the fact that there was an ignition problem and to possibly get GM on the hook as a judgment creditor and were therefore deprived of the ability to join in to the bankruptcy proceedings as judgment creditors may be able to come back and say, hey, you, you perpetrated a fraud on me. I shouldn't be foreclosed from now seeking my relief because you kept the information from but me Nolan, pers uh, purposefully. Yeah. Nolan, that's a lot of ifs, possibilities, and maybes, but GM stock going up right now because most likely that wouldn't happen. And even if it did, the amount of recovery for those people would be minimal since the GM responsible for the alleged cover-up no longer exists. Well, a lot of ifs, possibilities, and maybes pretty much describes the legal system. So that's a function of, of that. But the company uh, doesn't but, exist from which you would recover. It's out of business. The new company has nothing to do with the old company. Well, Therefore, it's, it's how would you ever get money? It's assets, and the assets of the company that created these cars and possibly covered up, and from what I understand, a lot of the personnel are still with the new GM. Yes, it was restructured. Yes, it went through a bankruptcy process. But the assets and presumably any residual profits from having made those uh, cars is still with the new GM entity. And by the way, by the way, let's not forget, we just learned all this this week. The new entity, which presumably has many of the same people, engineers, etc., continued and information continued to not disclose this possibly, if that's what happened, to the public. And as a consequence, they would have incurred new post-2009 liabilities based on their non-disclosures after the bankruptcy. Let's talk about what these liabilities could be and exactly how these lawsuits could be structured, because I think we're all kind of expecting a slew of lawsuits as people start to realize, oh, that accident I had in 2004 in my GM car, that's what happened to me. I'm going to get a lawyer. So let's talk about that. You say that this could end up multi-district litigation. And this would be where all of the lawsuits across the country would be in, put in some kind of consolidated pool. Explain what that would mean to GM as they try to start to defend themselves against this. Okay, sure. Well, generally speaking, and, and you'll recall this from the Ford Firestone rollovers and cases back in the early 2000s, if there are a lot of cases that revolve around the same product defect, in this case an automotive defect, um, but they all involve different damages. In other words, some people may have been killed, some people may have been badly injured, some people may have just suffered some, some minor damages. They're not a class because their damages are so disparate. But they do all have damages based on the same wrongful conduct or product defect. And so in those cases, what the federal courts will sometimes do is pool all of them together just for discovery purposes in what's called multi-district litigation, where the court will preside over depositions and discovery of information for all of these cases with some lead lawyers appointed to do it. And after liability is or is not uh, established, they would all go back to their home districts just for an adjudication on damages. That saves GM and it, it saved Ford 10, 14 years nope. ago. Uh, from repeated depositions. Nolan, shouldn't investors who are keeping an eye on the potential um, expenditure from GM to settle these future cases keep in mind that one of the problems is if you, there would be insurance, but if it is shown that fraud took place or there was a cover-up, the insurance would not cover GM. That would have to come out of the, the company itself, which would hit investors. I would be hesitant to, to, to give any investment advice generally or specifically 
to this. First of all, we don't know conclusively what GM knew and when they knew it and if they covered it up. Uh, we don't know what the insurance policies say with regard to what the coverage would be. And so I think at this point, with the information that we have right now, it's too early to say anything conclusive. We just we just started learning about this no, story a couple weeks go, ago. Before we let you go, just really quick, if you were defending GM right now, what would concern you more, the punitive damages that we are expecting or the government investigation that is underway right now? Well, the, a government investigation is always more concerning than, than everything because the government uh, has, has, has free reign to do, to do what it will. Um, and so a government investigation and a criminal investigation and an investigation by Congress, to me, if I represent GM, is certainly the greatest concern that I would have. And I would be telling my client that that's really where you, you, you focus your attention right now. All right, Nolan Klein, thank you very much for your perspective. It's going to be a long road for this company. Thank you, Nolan. Thank you.